Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and today I'm going to try my hand at painting this Warhammer 40k McFarlane Toys Chaos Space Marine using a combination of speed paints from the Army Painter and regular old acrylic paint. Speed paint is cool because it provides a base coat, highlights, and shadows all at the same time. The paints I have are from the starter set from the Army Painter, which you can pick up for around $30 to $35. These paints are marketed towards miniature painting, and I've painted a few miniatures with some pretty decent results. But I haven't been able to find any video that shows how speed paint works on larger figures, so I thought I'd make it myself. Now let me be clear and say I've only just begun painting figures. I'm learning as I go and I've been enjoying myself so far. So with that said, let's start the experiment. The first thing I did was give the figure a bath in soapy water to remove any residue left over from the manufacturer. I left it to dry and went to the store to buy some primer spray paint. These speed paints are meant to go over a light colored primer, so I decided to use the Zenithal priming process for this Chaos Marine. First, I cover the figure and the accessories with matte black primer. And then after an hour had passed, I sprayed them down with the flat white primer from the top down. The idea behind that is the white primer simulates light and the lower dark parts simulate shadow. It was a little windy when I did it, and the coverage is a little uneven, but I think it still came out okay, I think. So let's start painting. I'm gonna work on the main parts of the armor first. I'm using the blood red speed paint for these sections. And I gotta say, working on a seven inch figure is way less nerve wracking than a miniature. There's just so much more space. Anyway. This red blood color is going on super smooth, and that's only with a handful of drops. But the color is quite muted. To be fair, speed paint is meant to be used over white primer to get the best results. And since the armor here still has a hefty amount of black spray paint still exposed, it naturally makes the red darker than normal. It's all right though, this is a Chaos Space Marine, and in my mind, Bright colors wouldn't really suit this guy's style anyway. I worked on the spikes next. Unfortunately, the Gravelord gray speed paint that comes in the starter set was going to be too dark over the primer. I wanted the spikes to stand out a bit more, so I put the speed paints aside and decided to use good old acrylic paint. This Chaos Space Marine only has a little bit of skin exposed, and that's on his head. I think it makes sense for his skin to be discolored and gross, so I decided to mix the Crusader skin and palette bone speed paints together. I wanted to get a tone that resembled tan skin, but with a little bit of yellow grossness mixed in. But since his head was so dark from the spray paint, the speed paint failed to provide good coverage. It was just way too transparent. So I wiped it off and I brought out the acrylic paint. I used cobalt skin from the Army Painter for the base. It took about three thin coats to become opaque, but it looked so much better than the speed paint in this situation. I also applied a flesh tone wash also from the Army Painter on top of it, and it really helped to bring out the details. I really, really dig how this head turned out. I used metallic black for the parts in between the red armor on the boots and on the jetpack thingy on his back as well. I used silver paint for the tubes on his face and chest, and I dry brushed some silver across the giant skull on his leg. There are also a lot of smaller details throughout this process, such as adding bits of gold and green here and there, me trying and mostly failing at adding edge highlights, and me trying my darndest to make the spiked ax look battle-worn. But eventually, I got to a point where I considered this figure complete. I'll finish painting the gun a little bit later, but for now, here's the finished product. Maybe it's my lack of experience talking, but I really do like how this figure turned out. This was my first time painting a 7 inch figure from scratch, and I'm putting it out there for the whole world to see. 
Maybe the time I spend doing this will inspire a fellow toy collector to take up the brush and customize their figures as well. But even if you don't, I still appreciate you for taking the time out to watch this video. Until next time, I'm Jeremy, take care of yourself, and we'll talk again soon.